Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a sweet presence of praise. Amen. Um, it's nice to get loud and jump around and get excited, but at the same time, it's nice to have that spirit of peace in the room. Yes. Um, which is where I really think the Lord sets us up to implant something. Um, I do believe that. I believe at times he has to have us calm to really let us hear what he's saying. Um, and so, so I believe there's a work being done. Um, the Lord had laid something in my heart this morning. I don't know what it is, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I mean, he's been speaking so many things to me this morning. I hope uh, what I say makes sense. But, but I know it'll make sense in the spirit if, 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 uh, if that does make any sense. <laughs> Um, what the Lord, I was getting ready this morning, what I heard uh, in my spirit was, why Jesus? Um, and it wasn't coming from the place of like, you know, doubt and uh, pity party and like, oh, why Lord? Or, you know, it wasn't coming from the place of like, do I, you know, question and should I believe? It was more of the place like, uh, whenever we say we believe in Jesus, or I just heard it a minute ago, let us have the mind of Christ, what are we really saying? Like, why, why do we say that? Why do we want that? Why is it? Um, and it's a very complex question. It will probably take a lot of days to really give it, to tease it out and give it the, the uh, credit that it deserves. But, but the Lord was showing me something. Um, you know, as the, as, uh, especially in the nation and country we're in, where we have a religious freedom, you see, you, and you get exposed to so many things. Uh, maybe not us personally, but, it, but as a whole. And, you know, we hear stories and we hear different things. Um, but what is it that the Lord offers that, that, that no other religious entity or anything else can offer? Or that man himself can offer to people? Yes. Um, and that's what I believe the Lord's wanting to empower us with. We were talking about that this morning. We're going to be empowered. But we're going to be empowered with. Because we already have some people in the world that's empowered, but what they're empowered with isn't what we're talking about. That's right. Amen. We're not talking about being given over lump sums of money or... And, you know, and if that's a part of it, praise the Lord. But we're not talking about being given control and dominion over men or anything like that. Right. We're talking about a different kind of authority. Yes. An authority that does have control over men, but not us having control over other men, but the, but the, the man that's within inside us. Amen. Or I guess you should say the outer man that's going to be ruled by the man that's inside of us is the correct way to put it. But I believe that's the authority we're coming into. Um, but, but I heard that question, why Jesus? Um, and we look at, you, you know, we hear, and I'm, I'm no, by no means a uh, philosophy major or anything like that, so I don't understand all the ins and outs of it. But, but we have, you know, mainstream uh, religions, and we have all these different beliefs. Um, but there's something so unique about the Lord, Jesus Christ, that, that no other person lives up to. Uh, and C.S. Lewis writes about it really good. But, uh, you know, we have all these other prophets and teachers, and I'm not going to go down the list of names, and we all uh, know the main ones. But, but there's one thing Jesus claimed that these people didn't claim. He said he was God in the flesh. He's the, the son of the Father. All the other people came with teachings and they came with uh, all these other things. But he was the only one to ever come out and say that. And whenever he started saying that, at first he was, uh, you know, people, I mean, and, and, you know, you look at Old Testament, they always knew the Messiah was coming. Whenever Jesus actually first said that, it was like, imagine being the people hearing that of the day, walking the earth hearing, this is the Messiah. And those that began to believe that and began to live out of that, how it changed them. Compared to all these other religions or all these other ideas about one day this is going to happen or one, you know, far off in the future or, or um, you know, just try to be happy and, and, and all this... Uh, uh, Goose for Abbas stuff you can get into about just think happy thoughts and it's going to come and all this stuff, but there's really no power in any of that. Right. All that's doing is moving out of the flesh. Right. And as we know, that hasn't worked yet and it's never going to work. We can't change things unless we are empowered by the Lord. Yes. And that's what he's speaking in my heart this morning is the change that has to take place within us. Yes. The, the change of where we're living out of, the change of where we're thinking out of. It's a new mind that's coming. And as we talk about it, it's the mind of Christ. So what does that mean? You know, if we, uh, you know, we say that, that's, that's taking on a whole different thing of just uh, trying to live up to a, a, an external doctrine. You know, that's what the Old Testament was all about, is having these uh, lists of rules and governing and, and, and all that. And that's what we do even in this nation today. We have all these laws that we have to live by. And obviously those, 
those laws don't don't work as well. Just because you tell somebody uh, to don't go uh, or you know don't go uh, kill, steal, all that stuff, man's still doing it. Yeah. And there's some that that's enough yeah. because of the threat. But there's some people that have a heart that's not even governed toward that. That that's not even they, they, those acts couldn't be even a part of who they are because there's something inside them that's different. And that's what we're talking about is gaining the mind of Christ. We're going to be in Christ with a mind that doesn't even know these things. Doesn't know how to hate. Doesn't know how to uh, disappoint. Doesn't know how to uh, be envious or angry. You look at the character of Jesus and you, know, and you can spend so much talking about all the different uh, uh, things he did in the earth and all of this. Um, but even out of all the prophets, teachers, and all these things, which he was a great prophet. He was a great teacher. He was all these things. But he was so much more than that. And he is so much more than that. Yes. And so the part of Jesus that sets him aside from anybody else is he's not dead. He didn't go to the grave and stay there. Glory. All these other teachings, they're talking about people that knowingly died and they're still living off the teachings they gave 800 years ago, thousands of years ago. But those prophets or those teachers are never going to assist them in actually manifesting these things. And so the unique thing that we say about whenever we're talking about Jesus is he's alive and well. Yeah, yeah. And he's manifesting in a people. Yeah, yes. He's the only person that has the ability to change humanity. Yes. Yes. And he's given that power to us, so I know we're part of the picture, but we can't ever let ego get involved to think that we have as much part of it as we, we like to think we do sometimes. Because all we can do is create a bunch of messes. We see little bits and pieces of the plan. He's the only one that knows the beginning from the end. Yes, he is. And the end from the beginning. He, he, he knew it. He was the one that set the, the plan in place long ago. That's the other thing is Jesus, it says that, that he is, the word is what all things were created through and by. And all the things we can see, all the things we can hear, all the things we interact with were created by Jesus, through Jesus, out of what he is. And that's what they're being restored into is Christ. And so there's such a uniqueness whenever we look at, at, at the Lord um, that sets him apart from all other ideas, all other uh, uh, anything that you can come up with. And, and the greatest one of all is the resurrection. Um, as, as I said, he's the only one that has that power to be able to uh, overcome death through giving life. And I believe that's what he's wanting to begin to do in us is there has to become a people that begins to put death underfoot. Yeah. And it's not just, a, a, as I said, it can't be, a, a, just as all these other laws have always been, it can't be a knowledge thing where we know this is true, and so we're just going to believe it and make it happen. We have to begin to submit ourselves to the Lord. Because yes. that power is going to be given after a series of dealings, after a series of testings and trials. And a, 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 a setting up, I, I heard that this morning, of the order and the rank. Everybody has a place in the Lord. And I'm not here to bash uh, people that believe something a certain way or see something different or any of that. Because there's the, the Lord's in all of us. Yeah. And I'm not just saying a coexist thing either because there is something that we have to stand for and believe in the Lord. There's a truth and a reality that we can't go away from. He's a rock and he's solid and he always has been what he is. And so there is a truth. But there's also a place of grace and of mercy. Yes. And not only to have that with other people but to have it within ourselves. Because I think sometimes knowing about it can almost hurt us more than if we didn't know sometimes. Because we know what we're supposed to be. We know what we're going to be. We know what we're becoming. And so sometimes we get down on ourselves or question ourselves or, or say all these things. But the reality is, is that, that, and that's part of what the Lord's showing me so much in my personal life. That's what part of the mind of Christ is. Is to have that grace and that compassion and that mercy. Yes. And to experience the, the presence of what we were feeling just earlier this morning. There is the, there is the part of the excitement and the, 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 the happy and the, and the energy. But there's also that state of peace and calmness. Yes. Which I believe has to come to the people of God. And I believe it is. I believe uh, as, as, as this morning we read those prayer requests. And I didn't feel fear in the room. I didn't feel anybody saying, oh Lord, are we going to get this done? Um, and... and and we have to because there has to be a people that's able to go through these things and not be moved. That's solid. Yeah. 
that, 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 that's very empowered from the Lord himself. And that's what the Lord showed me this morning. He's the only one that can even offer that. There's no one else in the, in the history of ages or the ages to come that can ever offer that to us. Not any family members. Not any, uh, uh, and, I, and I respect highly the people in the ministry that, 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 are, that are pioneers. But it's not who they are in themselves. It's who they are in Christ. Yes. And to feed off of that and to grow out of that, and that's what I was feeling this morning is that we're uh, the place of communion. That's what that is. Is, is uh, Karen's calling the Christ out in me. I'm calling it out in her. And it's being shared with all of us. That's happening to everybody as we're up here ministering. Uh, I, I began to learn more and more as I minister. It's not uh, just about what I'm up here doing. It's about what y'all are feeding into me with. Y'all are drawing something out of me. And not just me. Everybody's drawing out of something out of everybody. What's being done in the spirit goes beyond our highest imaginations. Uh, because it's beyond our realm of possibilities in the flesh. It's, it's almost like a web, if you will. It's, it's an interconnectedness. That we're drawn off of so many things in this room right now. And beyond this room. Yes. In the spirit, there's, there's needs being met. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. That we don't even know about. Yes. That we don't understand. Amen. We don't understand how Mike Kelly's in the shape he is. Because even though he's having still some rough days, by, by human reasoning, he shouldn't be here. Amen. And that's not to be taken lightly. Not just in Mike, but in all these prayer requests we're hearing about. Yes. In all these people. Because what the Lord has to offer is so much more. Yes. And I can't say that enough. And I just want to glorify and honor the Lord. Yes. Because what he has to offer is so much more than anybody else can offer us. Yes. He's the only one that can offer us true love. Yes. More, than, uh, more than we love each other. Yes. I mean, and I know we have a love for each other. But we also get angry at each other. Yes. <laughs> We get frustrated. We, get, we lose patience. We lose all these things. We're, I mean, and, th and that's what I say. We can't beat ourselves up about it. That's just the way it is. Yeah. And I don't think that it's the way it's always going to be. But the Lord, He never gets down on us. He never second guesses. He never uh, uh, questions. Because He does know the end from the beginning. Yes. And He knows what place we serve in His kingdom. As uh, I, I think of it, even at my job, I'm in a management position. And, uh, you know, I have a select number of employees under me or whatever. And, you know, I have a goal that they give me that I have a vision that I have to carry out. And sometimes they don't know why they're doing the things they're doing. They don't see the big picture. Because there's somebody, and even I don't see the big picture. I'm getting orders from my bosses that are telling me. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. But, you know, I got the order. I have to t do it. But there's somebody at the head of the company that sees all the plans. Yeah. <laughs> that knows the future, where we're headed, where we're going, what has to be done. Who has to be prepared in order to do it? What positions have to be created? What, uh, what people have to be taken care of? The Lord, He sees all that yes. as a whole. Um, with, with all the things going on in the world that we could really get caught up in and uh, begin to live out of fear out of. Because yeah. according to the world's knowledge, there's some scary things going on. But in the spirit, those things don't exist. That's not a reality in the spirit, what we see in the earth realm. Because yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. in the spirit... The only one that has control of what's going on is Jesus. Yes. Thank you. He's the only one that can change things. He's the only one that can, can, can give out laws. And, if, and whenever we see things, things being done in the earth realm that we see so tremendous, it's because people aren't hearing that. They're not tuned in to what the Spirit's speaking. Because if they were, things would be different. But I believe that's what the Lord's doing is I believe he's beginning to wake up the calling people. That the man that wanted me to pray for this morning, Mike Seeley, um, I don't know what the Lord's going to do in him, but he's going to do something. Oh, yeah. He doesn't lay that in people's hearts and not just do, uh, to do nothing with. Yeah. He prepares their hearts and then implants something. Yeah. And that's what I believe the Lord's doing in us this morning is he's preparing our hearts for something to be manifested. Oh, yes. 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 For something that's coming up out of us that he placed there. Um, I went out to uh, California a few weeks ago, and that's what the Lord had, had me minister on was the manifestation. And that's what uh, it, it says. It, and and uh, I love hearing Mike talk about it. I love hearing Mike talk about a lot of things. But, but he puts it so great about uh, Christians actually on tiptoe. They're waiting. They're in expectations. They're actually at that moment of, uh, it's like whenever you're watching that movie and you're just like, what's going to happen next? That's what creation is at. Because what they've lived out of isn't working. 
And so the Lord is preparing a people and beginning to manifest something in a people. But it's not coming out of nowhere. It's coming out from some things that have been placed within us. Uh, as, as I shared out there, um, and I think uh, Bob was probably the first one I heard this from, was about uh, the manifestation where it comes from. You know, you can use it as a verb or a noun. And whenever it's used as a noun, it's talking about a manifestos, which is a, a, a document. That, that say like on a ship whenever they get ready to leave they have this manifesto that has all the things that's on the ship all the cargo all the people and whenever they get to where they're going they begin to read this to check off to make sure everything's there well the Lord placed the manifestos in each and every one of us long ago yes. and before we're even born before we're placed in this world and and there's things that he placed within us that that are part of the plan for all creation yeah. and some of us have very similar things some of us are joined in the spirit I hear that and, I, and, and, there's, and there's some of us that have unique things, and there's some of us that have all these different things. And I believe that we're beginning to draw those out of each other. I believe that the more that we get up and just get in the Spirit and express ourselves and become what we are in the Spirit, we begin to draw that out of others. I believe that you can't come into this building and not be changed. Amen. Maybe it's not a drastic change where we leave and we see this huge change in somebody, but something's changed every time you come in here. It's not because of uh, who we are in this building and we have all the, you know, and we don't even have a lot of people. Yeah. But it's because the Christ, the presence of Christ that gets manifested in this, in this yes, building. Yes, yes. Because we allow him to come up out of us. Yeah. And he actually fills the room, I believe that. He fills the room with his presence. And whenever you enter the presence of the Lord, as uh, the illustration this morning, that light shines into the darkness. It can't be kept back. There's no way to push it back and say, no, uh, don't, don't come into my darkness. And maybe it's not all at once, but each and every time we come back to the Lord and before the Lord, something's changed. I believe that individually. Amen. Every time we pray, every time we do all these things, something's changed. We may not feel it. We may not see it. Um, that awesome uh, message that, that, that Mike ministered about the progression, that just resonated with me. Um, I'd called Mike and I asked him... Uh, Whenever I heard it, I was, um, I was asked to cover a service out there at work. We do a church service on Sundays. And I began preparing something that the Lord had laid in my heart. And I heard that message. And I said, what better message to give somebody that's in a change of their life, sure. that's trying to find something, than what Mike ministered on serenity? Sure. And how many times I need to hear that about changes I've made? Because I get down. Uh, you know, I'll start saying... Well, Lord, maybe I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Or, you know, all these questions we can ask ourselves. But in reality, the, we're, if we look back, the Lord's progressed us. Sometimes it's rapid. Sometimes we see a quick change. Sometimes we see a slow change. But sometimes things take longer to work in us. Sometimes he doesn't, it, it's not just a thing that needs to be quick. Because we wouldn't get the point if it was. Sometimes we have to have our attention drawn to the Lord. For an extended period of time, sometimes he leaves us in limbo. Not, not a limbo like maybe he's going to do it, maybe he's not, but a limbo of that, that there's a time period to where these things change something in us that, that, that's been there. That's, that's what's going on right now is a cleansing of the house of God. Because there's things that have came in the house of God that aren't supposed to be there. There's greed, there's lust, there's envy, there's all these things. And, and as Jesus went in there and overthrew the tables in a temple, all that stuff's not supposed to be going on in the Father's house. Right. And so I see such a change coming to the people of God of not only are we having to consciously say, well, I can't go out there and do that because I say I'm a Christian and I say this. That's becoming not a part of who we are. We can't lie because that's not, not because we told, somebody told us we couldn't do it, but because we just, that's not in us. We can't cheat. We can't steal. We can't do all these things. And, and I know those are elaborate things. We can't... Uh, one of the big ones that, that, that affects humanity is pride. Ego. Yeah. And maybe it's not somebody that, that, that you... You know, you can see the people with the real big personalities. But maybe it's just little ego things that we don't realize. Because from a human point of view, it is about self. From a human point of view, we have to survive. But in the spirit, we're not trying to just survive. We're not trying to hang on. We're being given power. We're being given the, the authority over fear because of that perfect love. That's what it says. It's love cast out all fear. 
So whenever we enter into that presence of the Lord, all that's done away with, all these human characteristics you can think of, all the fear, the doubt, the, 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 all the things that are known to man begin to disappear in an instant because they don't exist in who the Lord is. And that's what we're talking about is being given authority and becoming Christ-like. Not becoming Christ. I know people say, I, I am God and all that stuff, but, but there's been things going on way before we got here. <laughs> and, and we're not God. We're becoming like Christ. He was the, the one son that all things became available to us through. Without him, there's none of this. We wouldn't even be here to be able to talk about it because we wouldn't have been created without him. And so you can get in, and I'm not, again, I'm not going to list names of all these prophets and teachers. You can get into all these things, but there's something so much more about our Lord that sets us apart from who we're worshiping and who we're believing in and who we're trusting in. And in this day, we're going to need that. Because I'm not here to instill fear, but things in the earthly sense aren't getting much better. We're going to keep seeing scary things on TV. We're going to keep hearing bad reports. But not in the spirit. That's where we have to have our head at, is in the spirit. But we can't get carried away either. There's a balance to it. Um, because I, with, with the kingdom, whenever you talk, start talking about the kingdom message... Um, it's going beyond the church world. It's, it's, it's believing in something that, 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 that ordinary people won't say they believe. Or that if, you, in all honesty, most people you tell it to would think you're going to hell for forever. If you tell them that, that, that God's going to save all people. And so it's almost setting flesh up to take on the mentality of a rebel. To just go against the mainstream. But that's not... That's not what the, the spirit that the Lord wants to instill through the kingdom message. It's not a message of re uh, uh, rebellion or retaliation. Or um, You can see that in people, though. And I, I mean, I, 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 don't, I, I hate to say that, but you can see that in people that even believe kingdom. Is there still this thing in them that's man? That wants to be different, wants to be unique, wants to be... All these things, that's the part that I'm talking about that's going to be dealt with. Because we can easily cut off the lying, cheating, cussing, stealing. But that part of us that wants to be... Uh, uh, somebody yeah. we have to come to the place where we don't want to be anybody we just want to let the Lord be the Lord and serve him but I believe that as as, as, as I was saying it's such a um, uh, a set aside thing that goes beyond the laws of, of religion and goes beyond all those things it can almost be a, a rebel message but I think I heard that at the conference I can't remember who said that um, something about we can be outlaws but not rebels or something. I don't remember what it was. I thought you were the one that said that. Maybe not. <laughs> but we, <laughs> we have to go beyond the law but at the same time not be rebellious. Because if we begin to let our flesh become rebellious and to become prideful, we're not able to, uh, to accept the dealings of the Lord in the way that we're going to have to to change. Because... He is the teacher. He is the, the instructor. He is the king. And that means that we're going to have to have that obedience. That, that we have to be humble. That we have to be able to accept um, the Lord moving through somebody to give us correction. Or the Lord giving us something that, 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 um, that maybe causes us to change a little bit. That, that doesn't let us have as much power in our lives. That he begins to tell us to do something different than where we were going with our lives or what we had planned. And so the Lord's dealing so much with me on that, of the fact that, that I have to begin to step out of the way. And I have to begin to allow my, my, my carnal man to be changed. And I'm not just in this big, huge battle of where every day I'm looking at this big hunk of flesh and I'm trying to fight it. But at the same time, there's still things in me and in all of us that we want to see changed. And so, so this morning, I just, whenever, whenever I heard that, the, the, the why Jesus, it, it spoke volumes to me. Because there's so many answers you could give. There's so many things you could go into. There's so many uh, uh, great mysteries still to be unveiled of our Lord and who He is. But at the same time, there's so many things that we can already see that, that sets Him aside and sets Him apart. And it is something that's set apart. And it is something that's unique and different from the world standards. But this is the way it's always been in God. It's not anything new. It's not anything... I've, I've shared what I believe sometimes with people and they'll say, Oh man, that's a... a 
like a, I forget what words they use, but like a, a brand new revelation or like something new or something. And that's what everybody's looking for, just something new to, you know, to get involved with. But that's not what we're getting involved with. This thing's ancient of days. Not that it's getting stale and old, but because it's always been. This is the principles that the world was founded from, that, that the person, who he is. And, and, and it's hard for our minds to sometimes comprehend what God's doing because we think of it in the terms of what we know of where we're constantly learning and growing and changing and, and, and doing all this. But in the Lord, none of that's there. It's, there is a process, but at the same time, the, the Lord is a, constant, uh, is, is a constant character, if you will. His, his character is never changing. His, uh, and I don't even know if you want to say character, but, but, the, but what he is, he is. And it's hard for us to comprehend because we go through emotion. We have that emotional part of our man. But I don't think Jesus has that emotional part. He came through and I believe that he was human. But at the same time, all that's in a lower realm than what we're talking about. All the emotion of, uh, of fear and of, of anger and all these things. Because what we're stepping into is beginning to become a constant. Where we're going to begin to experience more and more peace, more and more love. For one another, because that's what it says in, uh, in 1 John. It talks about that. If you, can't, if you don't truly love your brother, you don't truly know Christ. How can you say you know Christ and don't love your brother? And we can do that at times. We can say, we can, uh, and I know we do it out of just kidding around about what people believe and say and do. But we have to look on the inside of people. Not what they're saying or what they're doing and... All these things, because that's not really who they are. Because at times, that's not who I am. I say things that I look back and like, why did I ever say that? <laughs> I didn't really mean that. I don't know why that even came out. Or I do things that I know I shouldn't have did. And so we have to begin to minister to the, to the inside. To begin to call that out of people. That that's in there, that's, that's been there all along. That once they begin to experience it's almost, uh, I say this a lot too, is whenever I found the Lord, it was like I, I came home, I guess you'd say. It was like everything began to feel right. Because that's something that I knew all along. And so that's the part that we're ministering to, ministering to in creation, is that internal part. Yes. We're not looking to just set up some new laws for the, to govern the outsides of them, to start changing their actions. To say, well, this, you know, this scripture says this, and so do it. And amen to that, but at the same time, there has to be something changed on the inside that prevents people from doing these things. Because once the inside's changed, the outside's changed. But if you just try to change the outside, the inside's still sitting there, waiting for the next opportunity to come out. Um, I, I heard this about, um, there's a guy somebody was dealing with that was kind of one of those guys uh, that that gets really snippy and, you know, and does all this stuff and, and they redirected him and, and, and so he changed his behavior and he became real apologetic. I guess passive aggressive would be the best terms to use. And, um, and it was interesting. He made a comment. I never realized it until he said it. But he was like, well, what I've noticed with people like that is they'll change for a little bit and they'll act good. And as soon as they think you're good, give it a little bit of time and they'll begin to go back to their true self. Yeah. And see, we can't be like that in God. We can't one day or, or something start acting right and doing good and then the next day our true self keep coming out because that's the part that has to be changed that part that keeps causing us to do the things we don't want to do and say the things we don't want to say and so I believe that that the Lord's that's what he's empowering us with and manifesting us with is that inner man that's beginning to come upon us it says be clothed upon and that's where the change comes from we're not going to dress our outside man up and make it look different and try to change we're going to begin to manifest some things that are on the inside. Some very characteristics of God himself that he placed within man. And so I just praise and honor the Lord this morning and thank him um, for what's going on in the spirit. I really feel a time of change. Um, and I know we hear a lot, but it's an ever-going process. It's not just a, um, I mean, it could happen in the blink of an eye, but that's not the way God wanted it. It's, it's, it's a process he's putting his people through. And so as we begin to, to come into these encounters with people in our lives, we have to begin to look past all the things that people say about them, that they say about themselves, that, we, that our mind might automatically think when we see them. 
and begin to look through our spiritual eyes, if you will, and see the inside of these people. That's what Jesus saw. That's what he said. He said he knows, knows the man's heart. We have to begin to ask the Lord to give us that vision to see their heart, the pure heart, not the heart that's been broken, the physical man's heart, but the true heart of who they are. Because that's the part that whenever you minister to it, it begins to change who they are. That's where the change comes from. I was reading an article about, um, about mental health and how much it affects the physical health and how much uh, thoughts and all that stuff really does affect the human body and brain and all that. Um, and I believe that that's what we have to do is we have to call out that other mind that's in that person. We have to minister to it. Because whenever that other mind begins to rise up, that mind of Christ begins to take over their house, they become changed. All these things, we were praying for Mike uh, Seeley to be uh, delivered. Whenever that mind of Christ begins to come on, that mind's not an, uh, one that, that's driven by alcohol. Whenever that mind takes over, all that's gone. It's, that's where the deliverance comes in, is the change happens. And so I just praise and honor the Lord this morning and um, um, just excited about what, what's going on in the Spirit.